Sir Dawn's Legend of the Lost Treasure. A lot of people have been asking me to review this special. I've got emails saying like, when are you going to review Sir Dawn's Legend of the Lost Treasure? When's your review of Sir Dawn's Legend of the Lost Treasure coming out? This is the best Thomas movie I've ever seen, when are you going to review it? Well, I'm finally going to review it for the last episode of Thomas Semba this year. So this story is basically combining the railway with the sea. Okay, that's a clever idea. But how does it hold up as a 60 minute story? Well, let's begin with the story. Thomas the Tank Engine is running his branch line with his coaches Annie and Clarabelle. Surprised? While trying to spot Bertie in order to have a race, like they used to do in the classic series. Thomas survives it for Farquhar winning the race against Bertie. Meanwhile, Marion the Steam Shovel is on the Alsburg branch line heading to the construction site for a new branch line. While admiring the scenery, she gets a shock when she spots two objects, race past her, then decides to get a closer look. But it turns out that she spotted the small railway engines Rex, Bert and Mike, who are happen to deliver ballast for the new branch line, which are being delivered to Duck and Donald and Douglas. The next morning, Thomas goes to fetch Gordon's coaches, which I find kind of confusing. I mean, that used to be Thomas's job, but it's not anymore. I mean, Gordon learned that he's supposed to fetch his own coaches, but uh, anyway. Gordon, being a big blue douchebag that he is, has no patience for Thomas, and Thomas decides to play a trick on him by pushing the coaches to the wrong platform. But doing so, he causes the express coaches to derail across the tracks at Knapford, causing confusion and delay. Yeah, I said it. Later, the fat controller is very cross with Thomas, and Thomas desperately tries to blame the fault on Gordon, which kind of makes sense since it was Gordon's fault, I mean he was the one who started the fight in the first place. But the fat controller angrily yells at Thomas that it was 100% his fault, and he's sent to shunt trucks at the construction site for the new branch line as punishment. And while he's away, a new purple tank engine named Ryan comes to help out on Thomas's branch line while he's away which deeply upsets Thomas. The three small engines see that Thomas is really upset about Vine supposedly taking his place. And so they sing him a little song called Never Overlook a Little Engine, which is amazingly the first time a character has actually sung a song in this show. Well, a really long song, like a musical anyway. I mean, they did sing some small songs in the past, but this is the first time they've done a really big song like a musical. Anyway, Thomas delivers his loads over to the construction site, then pushes flatbeds further past the danger sign. Once he realises his mistake, he applies his brakes firmly, but the ground is so unstable that the flatbeds start falling into the cavern, and then they start to drag Thomas into the cavern. His driver and fireman jump clear, letting Thomas fall into the cavern. Well, that's just straight up common sense. Thomas then spots an old pirate ship, which he cannot believe is there. When Duck brings Rocky to help lift Thomas out of the cavern, the Fat Controller is once again really cross that Thomas has made two mistakes in one day. So he sends Thomas to the steamworks to be repaired. And even though they do repair him, they just don't repaint him for some reason. And I, I don't know, I don't really get why they did this. Anyway, after Thomas is repaired, he finds out that everybody thinks that Rocky found the pirate ship when it was actually Thomas who found it. Marion thinks that there's a buried treasure on the island, and since the, the pirate ship was found, then there's obviously going to be buried treasure somewhere. So she tries to make a wish from Rex, Bert and Mike, thinking that they're magic engines. What an imagination she has. Meanwhile, a mysterious sailor named Sailor John and his boat Skip are watching the whole time, as John is out for the treasure as well. After Thomas gets repaired, he's sent back to the branch line site to do some more work there. That night on the site, Thomas is awoken and spots a ghost in the boat, and decides to follow it. When he reaches the cavern, he finds out that the boat wasn't really a ghost boat, but instead a rail boat, which turns out to be Skip and Sailor John. Thomas and John eventually become friends and start their hunt for the treasure. But during the daylight, Sailor John has to go back to the sea, as he says that they've run out of shovels. But in reality, he doesn't want to get spotted by anyone else, since he's a pirate. When Thomas goes back to the yard, he forgets to tell Ryan that the coal he's taken is some bad coal that Thomas took the day before. When Ryan gets back with some trucks full of dynamite, some sparks from his funnel hit one of the dynamite sticks, which sets it off. Thomas then quickly bumps the trucks out of the way into the caverns to avoid any damages. 
When the fallen dynamite falls into the cavern and explodes inside, Thomas is cheered by everybody on the site. Except for the Fat Controller, who believes that Thomas is up to no good again. Despite Thomas' explanations, the angry Fat Controller refuses to believe him. Later that night, when all the engines are asleep, Thomas wakes up and sees Sailor John heading towards the cavern and decides to help him look for the treasure again. But after searching for hours and hours at the site and not finding any treasure, Sailor John becomes very suspicious that Thomas might have taken the treasure for himself, since only he, John and Skiff saw the map. Then after Sailor John and Skiff leave the site, Marion wakes up and it finds out that she actually did find the treasure. The Fat Controller is amazed by the treasure and decides to put it in a museum, and congratulates Marion, which is really fair, I mean she did find the treasure even though she didn't even know she had it in the first place. As Thomas is sent to take construction waste to the dump, he sees Henry rushing past afraid of the lost pirate that Salty told him about earlier. After turning the bend, he is shocked to come face to face with Sailor John, demanding where the treasure is. After Thomas explains what happens, John takes it pretty well. I haven't been searching all this time to see that treasure end up in a museum! It's for me! But despite his demands to get the treasure back for him, Thomas refuses, as he knows that the treasure was stolen and didn't belong to John in the first place. And the rest of the film is basically Thomas trying to protect the treasure from Sailor John, which leads to a big climax and a really exciting chase scene at the end. I remember during the summer of last year when I said that The Adventure Begins is the best Thomas Future Name special ever. Well, Sword Wars Legend of the Lost Treasure managed to top it. When I bought this on DVD, I had no idea what to expect from it. Was it going to be as good as the trailers made it out to be? Was it going to be better than the trailers? And then to my surprise, it turned out to be better than I thought it was going to be. It even topped The Adventure Begins on the best Thomas Future Name specials list. Now if I have any problems with this film, it is in one minor area. Which is, I personally think that the Fat Controller was being a little bit too harsh on Thomas. Yeah, I mean with the Snapford Station incident and the cabin incident, I get. But seriously, even after Thomas saves everyone's lives from the exploding dynamite, the Fat Controller believes that Thomas is up to no good. And even though Thomas tries to explain to him, the Fat Controller's just there like, no, number one engine of mine is going to finish an important sentence while I'm around! I mean, seriously, dude, couldn't you have just let Thomas get a fucking word in? I mean, the guy just saved everybody on the construction site from exploding dynamite. He just saved everybody from an incident like that Tugs episode, Munitions. Jesus, give the guy a break, you fat shit! Oh, and don't you dare insult the guy by congratulating him at the end. No, 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 you give him like a medal or a special prize or something, you fucking fuck fuck. Alright, I've had my bitching. Now on to the good stuff. But besides my problems with the Fat Controller being too harsh on Thomas <laughs> at times, this is a really great special. I mean, pretty much everything about it is really great. Like the sets are really nice and it's really good to see some of the classic sets. Marion's side story is a lot of laughs, and the small engines are really entertaining, and it is nice to see them introduced in a similar way to how they were introduced in the Railway series. And that chase scene with Thomas and Sailor John is just bloody awesome. In fact, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but this one is almost better than the Thomas and the Magic Railroad chase scene. I mean, for me it is kind of hard to beat the chase scene with Diesel 10 chasing after Thomas and Lady, but that chase scene with Thomas and Sailor John was just awesome. I mean, we start off with Sailor John riding on Skiff, and then we see him using the big boat for his superior sail power. And then we get the climax at the end where Sailor John's like using shovels and dynamite to try and get rid of Thomas. Jesus, and I thought this was supposed to be a kid's film. But it is a really awesome chase scene, and I don't really know how you can beat this one in the future. I mean, you've got the chase starting off at night time, and then you've got it ending at sunrise. Now that's a hard Thomas the Tank Engine chase scene to beat. But they can sure as hell try in the future. The animation in this special is really, really good. In fact, I'd say it's a complete improvement from the animation of CGI to the past series and specials. Little details like the water in the ocean, that really does look like it's really there to me. And as I said before, I really don't know why they didn't repaint Thomas at the Steamworks and just left him all rusty and dirty and all that. But I personally don't mind it, because to me it just shows how good the animation has gotten since we last saw the CGI animation in Thomas. 
And I thought it was a really clever way to combine the railway with the sea, like giving Skiff as little sailboats railway wheels. Now that was a really clever idea, you don't really see that that often, do you? Another highlight in this special is the fact that many characters from the past have come back, like Donald and Douglas, the Scottish twins. They even make a really clever and hilarious explanation of where they've been. Well, I never! Donald and Douglas! Haven't seen you two around in a while. We only went to collect some more rails and sleepers. Hey, so you can build some more track, that's all! <laughs> Well, I don't know, but it feels like you've been gone for ages. Cheerio! Oh, oh, uh, cheerio! Uh, don't leave it so long next time! <laughs> That's basically what every Thomas fan said, I bet. Even the pack members returned and Daisy returned. Yeah, even though it was right at the very end of the special, it still counts as a return. And I really do hope that Andrew Brenner has big plans for her in the future. This film also saw the introduction of Railway Series characters for the first time since Series 4, in Rex, Bert and Mike the Small Railway Engines. Rex, Bert and Mike the Small Railway Engines were Railway Series characters that we got to see in the Railway Series books, but unfortunately were never introduced into the TV series. UNTIL THIS YEAR! And so far their personalities are exactly as I remember from the books. And like Daisy, I do hope that Andrew Brenner has big plans for them in the future. Because they're really fun characters, especially with their crazy musical number, Never Overlook a Little Engine. And the visuals are just so amazing from that music video, it's kind of like a big lipped alligator moment. Except it actually does serve a purpose in the film. As for the new characters, we have Ryan, a purple tank engine who was sent to help out on the railway, and would also eventually become the new engine who runs on the new branch line. And when I first saw this character when the Fat Controller said that he'd be taking Thomas's place on this branch line while Thomas was serving his punishment, I was literally thinking, oh my god, they're not going to do Thomas and Stanley from The Great Discovery again, are we? Oh god, we've already had this once, please don't do it again, god! But thankfully, we didn't get a repeat of The Great Discovery. This was done in a very different way. It's kind of similar to The Great Discovery, but very, very different as well. I mean, Ryan's got a very good personality, kind, helpful, and always willing to help out his friends. And he even shows concern for Thomas after all the shit he's been through. Now, if that's not the sign of a good friend, I don't know what the hell is. There's Skip, the sailboat, who was given railway wheels so he could run on the rails. He was pretty much Sailor John's sidekick in the film, even though he didn't really know Sailor John's true intentions. He just went along with it because, well, Sailor John was operating him. But by the end of the film, he redeems himself by betraying Sailor John and helping out Thomas. And I hope Andrew Brenner has more plans for him, because I think it's really interesting to see a boat run on the rails. And last but not least, there's Sailor John voiced by Sir John Hurt. What can I say about this guy? He's nasty, diabolical, clever, and very piratey. His only interest is finding the lost treasure of Sodor and keeping it for himself. And I really did enjoy the relationship between him and Thomas in the film. At first it almost seemed like the relationship between Long John Silver and Jim Hawkins, like when they started off as friends and then became enemies. And what I really love about this special is how sinister and nasty and diabolical John Hurt is as Sailor John. Like a lot of John Hurt's performances I've seen over the years, he just plays the part of Sailor John really well. Like, whenever I hear his voice, I don't see John Hurt trying to play a character, I literally hear the character he's voicing. And I also love how nasty and diabolical he is as Sailor John. Which is kind of startling for me, because I've normally seen him playing likeable characters. And this movie also had some cameos from an animated Reverend Wilbert Audrey, which is very clever since it was said that a fictional character of him named the Finn Clergyman visited the island every now and then. So I thought that was a pretty good callback to the Railway series as well as a good nod for 70 years of the Railway series as well. So in conclusion, Sozor's Legend of the Lost Treasure is one of the greatest films I've ever seen, as well as being the best Thomas the Tank Engine film I've ever seen. 
Slurdor's Legend of the Lost Treasure is definitely the best Thomas feature name special to come out of the series. And it was another great contribution to the 70th anniversary of the Valway Six. So I'd definitely say that this special is number one of the Thomas specials. And if you haven't seen it yet, definitely check it out. You won't be disappointed with the story, the characters, and the references to the Valway series, as well as new characters and old characters returning. Ever since I started doing Thomas Semper, I wasn't really sure if the Thomas series was going to improve or not since the CGI started. But after going through the specials that Andrew Brennan did, as well as the episodes that he wrote, I'd say that the show is definitely improving. In a good way. And it's just been great to go through all these things through Thomas Semper throughout the years. And I want to thank you all for joining me in these Thomas Semper series, even if the most recent ones are really short. But nevertheless, I want to thank you all for joining me and hope that you all have a Merry Christmas.